In today's video, I have come to the beach to find some macro inspiration to take shots just like these. It's just after high tide, so the tide is moving out, and as it is, it's exposing all of these rocks on this bit of beach. So I've just been kind of wandering around, like exploring, seeing what that tide has uncovered. We've got shells, we've got seaweed, we've got rocks, we've got limpets. There's all kinds of different things going on here, and to be honest, I'm really glad that I've come down here. And I started today by walking through some of like the woodland, which is basically just sort of slightly away from the coast and I've walked through trees, I've walked through undergrowth and I found basically nothing. It's having one of those days when I'm just feeling very kind of uninspired and very uncreative. I've been wandering around this bit of woodland for quite a long time now and it's really bleak everywhere because it's been I guess quite cold. Nothing's really sprouting, nothing's really coming out. Everything's so brown and just dead on the ground. So I'm really struggling to actually find anything that I want to take photos of. And we all have those days, but I just really wanted to persevere, keep on going. If I didn't find something I liked in the first spot, I'll move on and I'll move on again and again. Eventually, I found myself down here at the beach. The first thing that caught my eye are these cluster of limpets on the rock here, because we've got all these little barnacles, but then the much larger limpets all kind of clustered together as a family. So I'm shooting these with the 35mm, which I really like because it is much wider angle than my 100, so I can get a lot more in the frame, but still get nice and close up. And in this case, what I'm doing is positioning the lens quite close to this rock, because we've got all of this um, all of these nice barnacles as foreground interest. So it's just creating sort of triangles and V shapes leading up to the limpets. Just using the natural light, it's all it needs at the moment. I'm, I've brought flash, I've brought LED panels. I might use them, depends whether I need them. But I'm just gonna try focus stacking this shot as well. I don't know if I'm going to want to because I like the fact that we've got these barnacles uh, in the immediate foreground um, all nice and out of focus. It gives that sense of depth of field. So. I might not need this, but let's just try it anyway. Focusing right down here at the closest point. Look that we've got this little snail just sitting on top of one of these limpets. I think it makes for a lovely little scene. I'm just trying to get the right angle where the snail is very clearly on top of the limpet, but also I'm not getting too close so that you can no longer tell that it is a limpet and not just like a bit of pointy rock. I think maybe something like this. It's looking quite nice. I'm manually focusing, just making sure that the top of that snail shell is nice and sharp. Again, I'm just going ambient light for this. F3.5, a 25th of a second. And now it's starting to rain. Notice so many more tiny little uh, sea snails clinging to different parts of the rock, different parts of limpets. So I'm just gonna kind of move my camera around and see if I can get any more shots while I'm in this position. Slightly raise my tripod up. So with this one again, we've got the lovely roundness of that snail shell, but it's on top of those bigger ridges of the limpet. So I quite like the fact that we've got that contrast between the two textures. And with the natural light, it's okay. But I have got a new LED panel. It's a bit of a monster, to be honest. So I'm just gonna bring this in. It's very, very bright over the top and then bring that shutter speed right back up There's another little lovely snail. This one's teeny tiny. It's got a beautiful orange shell though, which um, I think stands out really nicely from the gray rock. So I'm getting in close, still manually focusing, but I'm actually gonna do another focus stack here. The two of them just together. And actually, since I've been here taking this photo, we've kind of moved a little bit closer, which is really sweet. 
So I'm just doing a focus stack on kind of the middle of the frame where the snails themselves are. So that's quickly rattling through and that's hopefully just going to make sure that all of the shells absolutely pin sharp but hopefully still giving us some nice depth of field on the rock itself. I'm staying in the same spot. I'm just moving my tripod because we've got a really nice flat bit of rock here and we've got another um, small snail clinging to it but it's surrounded by barnacles so again I think it's uh, going to be quite a nice uh, picture for textures. Probably going to focus stack this because the tip of that snail is sort of standing out from the rock more than the barnacles behind it and I do want this to be nice and pin sharp but I really like how this looks. I'm not going to need 65 focus points though so I'm going to take that back down to I'm just going to do 15 should be okay. I'm at f3.2 a 13th of a second focusing right on the very tip of that snail. And the camera has rattled through and taken those shots. Again, this is one that I think works quite well with natural light, but I am going to try and bring in my own light for this one. Just because I think it might help add to that texture by giving a little bit more shadow detail, by having a bit more direction to the light. I'll slightly warm the light up though. So the scene might not need it, but it's definitely the case that if you've got the light sort of above the snail and these barnacles, then it's quite flat, like the ambient light. But if I move it off to the side, suddenly we get loads more shadow and it brings out the texture. So I think maybe I'm gonna hold it to like a 45 degree angle. Something like this. I'm at f4.5 now, a hundredth of a second. Still focusing on the tip of the snail and doing that focus stack. You can probably see that it is a thoroughly miserable day. It's 1st of April, but it is incredibly cold. It's windy, it's grey, it's rainy. Basically all the weathers that I think normally photographers would not bother picking up their cameras and coming out into. The longer I sit here and the longer my hands turn to blocks of ice, I am sort of wondering why I'm here as well. But it's a great day for macro because it means you don't get harsh light. We've got very flat lighting and that can be really helpful. You're not having to fight against hot spots and high contrast scenes. And certainly if you're bringing in your own light with LEDs or with flashes, it means that you've got complete control over where you put that light quite like how these shots look um, but the weather is taking a turn for the worst so I'm going to pack up my things and take these shots over into Lightroom. So I'm back home, I've warmed up and I've got my photos in Lightroom um, and I've selected these ones. This is one of the shots I did of the limpets on the rock and it is a 15 image focus stack. So if we just go through this you can see how that focus point travels through the image. So what we're gonna do is blend all these together to get a much sharper front to back image. So I'm gonna start off just by selecting all of these and right clicking and going export, export. And right now I'm just gonna call this limpet stack for the folder. And I'm gonna export these as DNG files, just the raw files into this folder. Then I open up Helicon Focus. Now, Helicon Focus is the software I mostly use for my focus stacking. I find that Photoshop with lots of layers doesn't really do very uh, a very neat job of things, whereas Helicon is usually pretty good. So I found those DNG photos that I've just exported. I'm going to open all of those and it will load them up into a stack on the right hand side. Now I tend to use method B. I don't really know a lot of difference between method A, B or C. Method B seems to just work fine for me. So I'm gonna press render and then we can watch as it works its way through the image. I love watching it build up like that. But the result is, as we can see, a nice sharp looking image. One of our source files on the left, we've just got this little sliver of um, uh, the barnacles in focus here, over here, we've got loads more in focus. So it looks really good. So I'm just gonna go saving and I'm gonna press save and it will just save to our desktop. Let's call it 
limpet stack. It will save as a TIFF file. And then I can find this image in my library and I can import it straight in. So here is our image and it's looking in pretty good shape. Um, if we have a little zoom in, we can just see how sharp these details are on the limpets and on the rock. It's lost focus a little bit in these deep cracks because I don't think I took quite enough focus points. I just did 15 um, and, and focusing such up close up here, I don't think it has basically traveled far enough through the image to get these ones in focus down here. So that's my mistake. Maybe I should have done 20 or even 30 or 40. But generally, I'm pretty pleased with how this looks. First thing I'm gonna do though is flip it. I'm gonna put it in this orientation because that is how I um, was framing up the image in when I took it. Um, but the obviously the auto um, flippiness of my camera sort of detected it as a landscape picture. But one of the things that stuck out to me when I was taking the shot that I mentioned was all of the sort of triangular um, lines going through the image. It's got a really nice um, sort of compositional layout with the way that the limpets are sort of clustered against these lines in the rock. So I've got my crop tool to a diagonal overlay just so I can kind of line things up in the way that I want. Um, I'm gonna do a four by five crop here, bring it down because I don't want to have these um, spare barnacles up here. Um, there's a lot of kind of empty space in this rock. So I'm gonna bring it down something like this. And right now we can kind of see that these barnacles here sort of line up nicely on here. This middle line, it, it's vaguely, but it does sort of go through this middle bit. And then this one here again, sort of mimics what we've got going on. So it's not perfectly lining up with the overlay, but it doesn't need to. Uh, but essentially like it, it sort of follows these nice diagonal rules um, going through the image. So I'm quite pleased with how that looks. So I'm gonna press enter to apply that crop. Uh, and now I'm gonna start actually making some of my own edits and I'm gonna drop the shadows slightly, just a little bit, bring down those highlights just a touch as well. Uh, but I'm also gonna add a little bit of sort of filmic fade using the curve tool, just by bringing up this bottom one here. If we just turn that off and on, that's a little bit much, something like this. It's a little difficult for me to edit sometimes when I'm doing video because I've got a big light right above that's lighting me up to appear on uh, camera. As a result, it does mean that I don't get exactly the um, look in the monitor that I want. But um, let's move down to the HSL tab because this is always where I do a lot of my editing work. Uh, with the hues, I want to take these yellows away from being a sort of um, quite pale yellow, make it a much more rich tone, something like this, uh, maybe a little bit less. Um, slightly make the oranges a little deeper as well. Um, but there's quite a bit of green in some of these barnacles. And so I'm just going to counter that dropping of the yellow in pushing those greens um, upwards a little bit. And as I do, you can see how much those colors pop out, particularly on um, the greens around here on these little barnacles on the limpet. Turn that tool off and on, off and on. You can see we've got much warmer yellow tones right here. They're sort of, a, around here is a very sickly green um, yellow. Whereas now we've brought out a much uh, warmer tone and we've still got this lovely emerald green of these barnacles, which I'm really pleased with. So if we just go before, and after, before and after, we've not made a huge amount of difference to the image, but it's a natural shot. I don't wanna to go too far with my production here. I want it to still have like a very natural looking scene. Um, but I'm gonna add a bit of color grading. In the shadows, I wanna add a little bit of cool blue tones, something like this perhaps, more of a royal blue rather than a cyan. And again, that might be a little bit much, but I'm struggling to see. So I'm just gonna play it safe and just go with 12 on the saturation. But I'm also gonna add in a little bit of warmth in the oranges in the highlights. Maybe something like this, which I think is just giving a nice little color graded look to our scene. I'm quite pleased with that before and after. But there's a couple of other things I'm gonna do at this point. And one of them is adding in a brush tool uh, just like this, I'm gonna brush over these barnacles here and a little bit on here as well. And I'm gonna add some here and a little bit here. We're just brushing in for now, because what I wanna do is just try and bring out a bit more of those details by upping the whites and adding some clarity. Now, if I added clarity to this whole image, it would look very weird very quickly, but instead I'm just painting it in, just allowing us to kind of bring out some of those details. 
exactly where we want it. And as I pulse this up and down, you can see what it's doing. If we go too far, again, it looks weird, but like adding a little bit of that punch somewhere around 26 is really helping kind of bring out some of those details. And I think that looks really nice. So I'm gonna close the mask tool. We go before and after, before and after. I think this is going really well. The only thing that I wanna do um, beyond this is down here, we've got this corner where it was the edge of the rock. And as a result, it does just sort of fall into an out of focus nothingness. Um, and it does look a little bit wrong. It just looks like there's been an error with the focus stack or something, which there has not been. So I'm gonna right click and take this over into Photoshop. I'm gonna start off by duplicating the layer just so that I can check how it looks against the original. Um, and what I'm gonna do is basically try and clone some of this rock into this triangle, um, just to kind of make it look like the rock has filled the frame. I'm gonna command and click here, bring my tool down. And now we're gonna paint in. And then same here. Just trying to blend everything in, hopefully making it look fairly realistic. Let's just try and add in a little bit more interest down here so it's not just an expansive gray rock. So how does this look? The problem is if we just turn that off and on, then it's very, very obvious what we've done here. So what I need to try and do is imagine if I didn't know I'd done that edit, would I necessarily look at this? What is a very rough edit? Would I believe it? Would, does it actually look like how that rock might sort of curve with the light? It doesn't look great. So I'm just gonna kind of keep on going over it a little bit, um, taking different samples from different spots and just sort of brushing that over. I think something like this already just filling in some of these bits looks a little bit more natural. I played around a little bit more. Uh, I'm not totally happy with it, but you get the impression. If you spent more time, you could do a much better job. I'm just trying to do a quick edit. So I press Control S, save that. That will send it back over into Lightroom. And here it is. And I might do a few more tweaks at this point. We could maybe bring down those shadows. We could even take a look through some of our presets if we wanted to apply a different look. Um, I'm not really sure any of them I do want to because I've already um, applied some of my own edits. But um, overall, I'm quite happy with how this image looks. Um, I might just darken down this corner, to be honest, with a linear gradient, bring that in. It is a little bit bright and it will also help cover up some of the dodgy edits that I've just done. Um, but also, it allows the lighter parts of the image to really stand out. And I often use linear gradients for that reason because your eye is more naturally drawn to the brighter parts of an image. In that case, it's the, um, the limpets. So maybe bringing this down, creating the sort of natural fall off might not be a bad idea. I think something like that works well enough. But again, you can spend more time in doing that yourself rather than it being such a rush job. Maybe a little bit coming down from the top here. But there we go, overall that is probably the image. Um, I do like it, I know it's a really, really basic shot and it's not exactly something that would uh, you know, go up for awards or I would even put on my wall or in my portfolio, but it did stand out to me because of these lovely diagonals and the triangles cutting through the scene. And for a day where I felt really uninspired, I felt uncreative, I was walking for ages and I found nothing at all. And then I just found myself down at the little bit of beach. I'm still pleased that I was able to get a couple of photos that I quite like. And so often that is the biggest challenge in macro photography or in any photography, to be honest, you can really struggle to find an image that you like. And the more you struggle, the more you start to feel quite downhearted and uncreative, particularly if you've really gone to a lot of effort to kind of get out there with all your equipment to take photos. So the idea of coming home with nothing is often quite a difficult thing to do. But just by persevering and moving to different locations, I think I found something that justified me being outside. But I hope you've enjoyed seeing how I take these photos and how I would piece together these photo stacks in Lightroom and Photoshop. If you have enjoyed this video, then do please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.